Amen. Psalm 1. Let's take a look at that right fast. It says, blessed is the man. I just want to stop just right for just a minute. Blessed is the man. And, and what it really breaks down to is happy, you see. So if you're blessed, then guess what? You ought to be happy. Amen. Hi, amen. There was a song that came out a long time ago. I forgot his name. But it was a song about happy. Yeah, y'all remember that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, happy. is a guy from the... Uh, uh, Jamaica, somewhere, I don't know where it was, at least the music sounded like that. But happy is the man. And happy, being happy is sometimes, you know, we say happy is an outward thing, something that's happened to you on the outward. But the thing is, when the fact of the matter is, when Jesus Christ, when God blesses you on the inward, what happens is that you ain't got no choice but to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When we woke up this morning, you ought to have been happy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know children, when they wake up, they start crying. But when we wake up, we should be crying. We should be complaining. We should just be able to say thank you. And because when we say thank you, amen, just happiness comes all over you. Because why? Because you received something, amen, that you didn't necessarily deserve. It was given to you. Thank you. Hallelujah. But bless, amen, is a man. And here we go. Here we go. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And then, or the, or the wicked. So, when we don't walk or, or take the path of the ungodly, when we walk in the, walk in, 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 the, in the path of righteousness, amen, you will have your sanity, you will be happy, and then you will be blessed. Amen. If we walk right. Yeah. Amen. We know how it is not to walk right. Every one of us in here know how it is not to walk right. But when we started walking right, Amen. We begin to receive the blessings that God has for us. Amen. That's right. We start receiving a blessing. Why? Because we begin to walk in his word. Because the word of God says, it says this right here. It says, we walk not by what? We walk by what? Faith, but not by sight. So therefore, with that saying that, when we walk in, in the path of righteousness, then we will receive the blessings of God because we are in tune with this word. We're in tune with this spirit. We're being directed and guided, amen, by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But if we have a tendency of following the wicked, then that's when our blessings drop off. That's when we feel like that we have been abandoned by God. But let me know, uh, let you know something here. In Sunday school, we learned is that, no, God didn't abandon us. We have a tendency of leaving him. Yeah. We're the ones that go off course. We're the ones that, that go off of the highway. You know how they're yielding. You know, there's a song said uh, about that. Uh, what's that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yield not to temptation. You know how they were going down the highway and there's this big old sign. Because the signs are there before you, before you go off the highway. They let you know in advance. Yeah. There's a sign that says temptation. <laughs> and then uh, it's a half mile up. And we start putting our signal light on, you know, ready, ready to turn. We say, yield not to temptation. And then guess what? Whenever temptation is there, there are signs there. There are warning signs there letting us know, amen, that temptation is there. Amen. It's, it's up to us whether we want to yield or not. Yeah. It's there. We know it. And it's not a surprise when we fall. It's only a surprise when we're caught. Because of the fact that when we walk in the paths of righteousness, we will receive the blessings of God. But it says right there in verse number one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Where are we getting our counsel from? Where are we getting our influence from? If our influence is coming from the world, we're going to receive just what the world has for us. We need to go to the word of God. We need to go to God. We need to seek him first. When we seek him first and everything else, everything will fall in line. And he'll direct us, direct us right where we need to go and when we need to go there. It says, that walketh not. And that walketh with ETH as we continue to study. That means a continual, a continual walking in this aspect of it. That, that man walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And then it says, not only do we walk, but it says, nor standeth 
in the way of sinners. Now, when we stand in the way of sinners, we just right along with them. Right there with them. When they're cracking those jokes, we're right there laughing right along with them. Amen. When we're just, uh, when they're doing all that kind of stuff, we're right there with them. If we're not doing any type of correction. If we're not doing any type of correction, guess what? Their influence is rubbing off on us. It's supposed to be the other way around. But we're allowing the world's influence to rub off on us. I mean, you ain't got to raise no hands, but I'm still asking the question, how many of us, amen, watch that one, uh, the one show, y'all know what I'm talking about, that fella that dressed up with, with dresses and stuff. That guy, big old guy too, six foot something. You see that? I ain't calling no names, brother. See that? I ain't said, I, 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 you know, and, and, and then, uh, uh, you know, and then when you, when you really think about it, you know, the Got us all wrapped up in that thing and stuff, you know, because, you know, we like the funnies. You know that, right? And so, you know, got us wrapped up in there, and then all of a sudden, you know, it seemed like it's nothing. After all, Flip Wilson did it, right? Yeah. Geraldine. Yeah. So, you know, why not? And the thing is, that we get so wrapped up in this, y'all. I ain't got nothing against a brother now. It's, that's a brother now. He ain't had no gender, what do you call it? He, you know, he, he, he's a man. But the thing is that when he was, what, what happens is that we get so into it and we're, and we're accepting with that. And because we're accepting with that, guess what? The enemy says, gotcha. Gotcha. Now that you have accepted that, I'm going to put something else out there. And you can't talk against it because you've accepted this. And that's what it is. It's that standing with the wicked and, and walking in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the ungodly's uh, uh, path or, or walking with them. And that's what all that is doing, y'all. I know that's not the only thing. That's my, that's my pick on thing. Yeah. You see? But the thing is that that's what happens and we're allowing that to come in our homes and in our lives. And then when our children start growing up, the kids start growing up, they say, what do you want to dress up for Halloween as? I want to be my dear. What are you going to tell them that? Look, boy, you can't put on no dress. Why not? You know, we already wearing the earrings. Yeah. Now all we got to do is put on the dress. We almost completed the cycle there. Because the earring became acceptable at first. Y'all remember that? One, one earring was okay for the man. Y'all remember that, right? Uh -huh. Then we took it to the babies. And then now, all of a sudden, when we go to the, to the woman's section of the store to go, to go get an earring, we go ahead and buy two, so why leave one away? Now we start wearing two earrings. That's what happens. I mean, look, I remember when I was younger, yes, 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 my mother had those little, those little earrings that, that, that claps. Y'all remember those? And put them on your ear, they hurt too. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what you know about that? <laughs> uh, so, so the thing is, is that we got to teach our children, yes, sir. our little boys, uh, and everything, right? Uh, teach them to grow up to be cowboys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the thing is, look, the Bible tells us, because if we don't teach them, the world will. I wanted to become Roy Rogers, yeah. you know, uh, and, and, uh, and all the other, other ones like that. Speed Ranger, Long Ranger, Speed Racer and stuff like that, you know. But the thing is, is that we got to teach them. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner. The thing is, is that, check this out, he's talking to us grown folk right now. And if us grown folk are, are, are doing all these things that's, that a happy man or a blessed man don't do, then that just simply just uh, enforces with our children or reinforces that it's okay to do what I do. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, the mockers and the scoffers and everything else. But if we want our children to be blessed, y'all, then we've got to walk in the blessing ourselves. Yeah, we gotta set that on my aside, that, that Tyler Perry thing aside. I said it now. So, so take that thing aside. Take a look at it. Why? Should be the question. Why? 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 The 
Bible says, but that blessed man, if you want to be blessed, your delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, meditates, ponders, thinks about it, day and night. You ever taken a scripture in and it may have applied to your situation. And as you took that scripture, you looked at it and you thought about it. Put it into your spirit. You just sat there with it. Thought more about it. That's what we do with God's word. Study God's word. It's not like a book, a novel, or something like that where we read something, we set aside, and go to something else. But when we get into God's word, and we take a little chunk of it, and then we digest it. Just let it stay in there, and then we just simply just work on that. And then it becomes part of us. And then we start walking in it. That's what a blessed man does. He's taking the law of God, the word of God. And he eats it. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, eat the whole roll. Take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just take it and receive it. Sometimes as we take it, it's like medicine and it doesn't taste good at first. But it's good for us. Mm -hmm. I saw Sonia, what y'all put out there? Castor oil and... and Carter's liver pills. My mother sent me to the store to Fred Montese back uh, uh, in high school and went over there and came and went into the store at Fred Montese over there on Madison, I think it was. And there, a fellow asked me what was I looking for. I was talking about looking for some cops cut the lips pills. <laughs> what? That's what he said. I said, he said, what? I said, cop to cut the little cop to cut the cut the little pills. Yeah, that's the way my mother said it. <laughs> so I said it. And after after he said, oh, I know what you're talking about. He told me, and I read it finally. Carter's little pills. Oh, I'm like saying, I said from now on, I'm gonna make sure I know what I'm ordering or what I'm getting, you know, before I listen to somebody, you know. But all the medicines that's out there, it may not taste good for us, but it'll be good for us. Word of God, we we'll take it, eat it. And if it's not setting right, that's okay. Because it's fixing us. We need it. It's medicine. Then we'll be able to go on. Why? Because we're blessed. We'll know it. The Bible here is, is, is what we ought to be meditating on. And, and our desire should be for the word of God. And, and when it's like that, then when our children are around, they'll see us with the word of God. They'll see us with a lamp just on the word of God. They'll see us in a prayer stance, uh, whether laying down, sitting down, kneeling or whatever. But they know that we're talking to the Lord. You see, that, that, and that's what our children need to see from, from the parents. You see, they need to see that. And when they see it, then they begin to have some type of respect for the word of God. Some type of respect for a man, God. Because they're learning, we're teaching them. So the Bible tells us to, to do that, to, to teach them while we're doing it. We're not all going to do it the same way. But as children look and watch us, and they're going to get something from it. Mm -hmm. Our grandchildren know when we sit down at the table, they know that they ain't supposed to eat until, until we pray. They know that, and then they know that it ends in amen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got to teach them just the small things, and as they come up, you know, so they would remember and that they would know. So we need to leave something for our children. It ain't always got to be no money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, got money, might as well start spending it now. Uh, they sure going to do it for you. But the thing is, is that we need to leave them something. Something that, that, that can, what? Carry them on. But he says this, and he shall be like a tree. 
If we meditate on God's word, receive God's word, allow it to just get into our heart and just uh, settle in there. Just like, you know, we get food and it's settled. And then after we eat that food, we say, somebody said that. Man. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's settled in the right place. We say, look, that we say that was good. We say, uh, we, we say, we say a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we get that toothpick out after that, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and so, we, but the thing is that, when we get into God's word and receive it and then, then you say, then you, when you receive it and you got it and it snaps on you like saying, yeah, that's it. And then you're raring for more of it. You see, so the thing is, is that, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water because that's going to sustain you. The word of God is going to sustain you because once you put God's word in you, and, and then, of course, you know, those of us who've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and, and we got the Holy Spirit in us, we put God's word inside of us, amen, that word, amen, will never go dry. That word of God will continue to be, will, will continue to sustain us and will continue just to, just to go on. But he said he shall be like a tree, a tree, a tree is something that's big a tree is you know you know trees are, are many sizes we know that but when we think of a tree we think of the the, the tree with the big old trunk and everything you know that that's real high and that's what we think about when we're talking about a tree and then when we're talking about when it comes to the word of God that's what I think about because it's be like a tree that are planted by the rivers of water because a tree when it's receiving a man those things or nutrients what they're supposed to receive that tree is gonna grow and it's saying, tell, telling us that we should be like it when we meditate on God's word. We'll be like a tree that's going to grow. It says that bringing forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Because whatever you do for the Lord is going to be blessed. Why? It's going to be blessed. Why? Because you are blessed. The Bible said it right here. Blessed is the man, amen, that stays on the path of righteousness, that stays right. Blessed is that man that don't follow wickedness. Blessed is that man that don't sit down with those who ain't saved, that those who are in sin. Blessed is that man that meditate on God's word. Happy is that man. Oh, boy, I tell you what. I am happy in Jesus. Y'all say, you sure don't look like it, though. <laughs> Well, we can substitute this passion with happy, okay? But yeah, we can smile, and I guess we should do more smiling than frowning, I imagine. But, but yeah, we're, we're, we're happy, we're blessed because we're blessed. And whatever we do for the Lord, we know it's blessed because we're blessed. Yeah. You try doing something out there, and you know that you're blessed. You know it's going to be blessed, whatever it is. You know it's going to be blessed. No doubt at all. Why? Because the word says it. Says it right there. It says this right here. His leaf also shall not wither. But it's fall, winter, spring or summer. And whatsoever he doeth, the Bible says, shall prosper. And then the the opposite of that picks up in verse 4. The ungodly are not so. We know folk that's not saved. See, it's one thing about not being saved. Well, I guess you can separate the unsaved in some categories there. You got some unsaved folk that's respectful. You got some unsaved folk that's downright Disrespectful. Thank you, Glenda. Yeah. Just outright. And so the thing is, is that you got those different categories, but the, but the bottom line of it is that if they're ungodly, they're ungodly. They ain't saved. They ain't saved. But he says that even those good unsaved folk ain't going to amount to nothing when it comes to anything for the Lord. Unless God uses them for his glory. And the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. In Sunday school, we talk about that chaff. Says that, that, God help me out now, that, that we, not meal, what do we call it? Grain, yeah. Think about some cornmeal or something like that, right? The grain. And then uh, um, it's, it's all grinded up, thank you. So these different words, right? Grinded up, and then 
uh, you see that that fan, or it um, you throw it up in the air, and then the heavy parts continue down, but the wind blows the Fire. chaff, yeah, that light stuff away. And that stuff right there just simply be burned up. That that stuff it it, it, it you know will count to nothing. Uh, so uh, he goes on and and says that. He says that the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So that's, how, that's what the ungodly does. It's going to just... So whenever the, the ungodly are dealing with us, we, don't, we shouldn't be bothered because they're going to be like the chaff which the wind drives away. They're going to just go on. Don't worry about them. Don't get bent out of shape about them. They're going to move on out of the way. All right? So just hang on in there. Wait on the Lord. Study in Sunday school too. Look at five. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There will be a separation, y'all, one day. It's going to be a separation of the, of the righteous and the unrighteous. There's going to be a separation. When Jesus comes back, the righteous will be the ones that are going to be taken up. The unrighteous will be left behind. There will be a separation. Right now, there is a separation. The Bible tells us to sanctify ourselves. Sanctify simply means just to be separated, to, to be used for his service. And for those who are not being used are the unsanctified. So we are to do this on a daily basis. Set yourself aside for God's use. Be ready to be used for God. When we wake up and say thank you, then because we're blessed, we're happy. And then we say, God, I'm sanctifying myself. Use me however you see fit. And then before you know it, somebody coming up to you asking you what church you go to. And then you tell them, I got a better question for you. Are you saved? Don't forget to tell them up a Canaan, okay? <laughs> and then what happens is that God will put you in a different, put different uh, situations where, where he can use you. And that's, and that's how it is. First, it starts off with surrender. We've got to surrender to be used by God. Because if we don't surrender, I'm still doing what I, Julius Hawkins, want to do. But when I surrender, I'm saying, God, use me. And he'll use you. If you want the Holy Ghost to use you, all you got to do is surrender to him. Allow him to use you. He'll do some wonderful, some marvelous things in your life. He will. He'll do what the Bible says that he will do in your life. If you've never experienced him, if you have never experienced that Holy Ghost just using you, oh, Thank you, Jesus. Just using you. I'm talking about consumption. It is awesome. Well, how can we do it every day, all day long? <laughs> it's out of this world. But we need to allow the Holy Ghost to do that in our lives Amen. so God can be glorified. Yeah, we all got the Holy Ghost. Certainly we got the Holy Ghost, those of us who say it. But when you allow him to take full control of your life, he'll take you places that you thought you'd never go. He'll do the things, amen, in your life that you never thought were possible. But first, it takes us to be obedient and to surrender to him. Because when you surrender, you are no longer in control. You are no longer, you have given that right up to him. That's what happens. So when he tells you to go tell somebody something, it's best for you to go and tell them. He tells you to do something, it's best for you to just go ahead and do it. Because why? He's using you. You ask, he'll do it. He'll give you the strength, he'll give you the boldness. But we do have to take that step. But yeah, it says right here, the ungodly are not so, but I like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. The Lord knoweth the way of 
the righteous. Are you righteous today? In Jesus Christ. He knows the way. If we would only allow him to have full control of our lives, what a church this would be. What a life you will live. God will be seen in places you thought he wouldn't be seen. You've gone places where it says, where is the God in here? Where, 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 where is God in this place at? Well, don't forget. You there now. <laughs> it's time for him to start moving now that you are there. And that's what happens. That's what happens. Uh, keep in mind, not saying that when you come to a church, everything's supposed to be perfect. No. Not going to be perfect. Everybody ain't going to be on the, uh, the same level or however you want to put it at somebody else or like that. You know, because we all are different in our different areas. But if we find a perfect church, and I think I read this somewhere, if you find a perfect church, as soon as you join, it ain't perfect no more. <laughs> you, 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 you see that? So that means that whoever God sends to this church, they got a work to do and a work to be worked, and God is going to work on them. Y'all catch that? Because we all still being worked on, and at the same time, we have a work to do. So that means that we're all going to have our ups and our downs. You see, everybody ain't going to say thank you at the same time. I'm going to say thank you when it hit me. And you know how you say hit me? I'm not talking about James Brown, okay? <laughs> uh, he said, this, this, okay, here, look. It says, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Look at the other part. But the way of the ungodly, what shall happen? Let's do it the way of the righteous. Let's do it God's way. Because when we do it God's way, then we can very easily influence others. We can influence others. So if we want to take anything away from Psalm 1 right here, I would just entitle it proper influence. Proper influence. Because we're being influenced by the Word of God. And if we're influenced by the Word of God, then we can go out to this world and influence this world according to God's Word. But if we don't walk according to what God's Word says, if we sit in the seat of the swamp walk with the sinners, uh, stand in the way of the uh, unrighteous and do all those things, then our influence not going to be not going to be good. We will be influenced by them, by the world. And we need to do it right. So church, if we want to do it the way which God says do it, we've got to be right with God. Amen. We've got to be right with God. Now I'm not going to put no guilt trip on nobody. But you know it would be good if everybody came to Sunday school. And Bible study on Wednesday night. It would be almost like church service. Y'all almost wanted me to take a text and everything. And try to come out three points in the, in the poem. <laughs> Have so many people <laughs> in there. But no. Sunday school and Bible study. We have an opportunity to. to um, how do you say it? Input. Input. Thank you sir. Uh, we're able to have input. We can discuss and talk about the Word of God. And I'd love to, to do that because we learn more when we do that from one another. And we have different points of view or different views on a passage because of what I have gone through on last week or last year. I'm able to share a word regarding this, how it helped me, and it can help somebody else. So if we come in together in, in, those, in those settings, and then when we do go home and we have our children, our grandchildren around, we can share with them. We can be able to start picking up that Bible early in the morning with that light on it, and a child come through and see it, and then they are ready to say something, and they turn around and walk away. Why? Because they don't want to disturb you because they know that you're, you're in communion with God. And they start respecting that. And then when they come busting up in the church, they stop and say, the word of God is being read. Let me not move. Let's stop. Somebody's praying. Let me stop right here. That's how we start teaching our children at home. And then when we go out in public, you won't be, what's that, put to shame. You won't be embarrassed for your children. Or your children won't embarrass you. 
how you want to put it. But we need to teach them at home. And we teach them at home, God is going to raise them up. And then the word is going to be true. How we train our children at home. Train them. Train them up in the way in which they should go. Because one day they're going to leave. They're going to go away from home. Maybe they get out there in the world. But the training is in them. And they will be back. God bless you, saints. Amen. 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 Amen.